Howdy folks, Pilgrim here. Folks, I'm very, very sick right now, but I wanted to make a video before Hanukkah on December the 7th started because I never expected such an overwhelming response to my last video. Um, my last channel had a small grouping of about 5,000 people on it, and this channel, since my last one got closed down, is, is much smaller. But there's a reason for that, and that's because I cover an area of prophecy that is largely undiscovered here in the West. Jewish Christians know about the things I talk about on this channel, but Westerners and Western pastors and so on <coughs> have never heard of the things that we talk about here. And yet we have spoken about things on this channel before they happened. And then they happened exactly so. And that's just the history, okay? It would take me too long to go into everything, but mostly the prophecies that we talk about on this channel center around the New Madrid fault line and the splitting of the United States in two. Mankind has never lived through the splitting of an, ent of an entire continent before. But this will happen after the United States succeeds in splitting the city of Jerusalem and dividing the land of Israel in two, which God has said you shall not do. <clears throat> There's a lot of parallels that have taken place along, along that line. When you study U.S. policy, uh, the Americans do this, and th this immediately happens to the United States on an equivalential basis. And uh, th it's a whole study area in itself. Uh, like when they gave away Gaza and uh, Hurricane Katrina came and wiped out a, a numerically equivalential number of people from their homes. And in Hurricane Katrina, it was very interesting to see that it was the part of the embankment called the West Bank that gave away and flooded that whole area, which drove all those people from their homes. And the number was equivalential to the number of Israelis that were driven from their homes. But this is a whole section of prophecy um, that would just take me too long to get into here. On this channel, we discuss the events of 1954, the 70-year period over the United States, uh, you know, equivalent to, the, to Israel's 70-year period and so on. Again, this is stuff you have never heard of. You have no idea what I'm talking about. But... Those who've been on my channel have spent a long time learning uh, about these subjects and seeing pieces of prophecy that are not commonly taught in the West falling into place, building a picture. The upshot is this. We're very, very close on the cusp of the Great Tribulation, of the Tribulation period. So I was surprised when I had an overwhelming number of people, over 3,000 uh, views on the last video that I made yesterday, knowing that I'm a very small channel. I haven't seen that number in years. Um, <clears throat> and of course, I got everybody asking, you know, range, with different opinions, ranging from asking me if I was drunk. I don't drink at all. Um, you know, to the usual claims of false prophet uh, and this and that and so on. And that seems to stem, uh, you know, that flow of voices seems to stem after I uh, stem off after I put a statement below the video, which said, and I'm going to read it to you. Of course, every time I make a video even mentioning the rapture, there come the haters, trolls, government employees. Yes, you heard that right. There are people who are actually paid by the government to oppose Christian channels. Actual, actual paid employees. Um, lefties and those calling themselves believers, who calling themselves believers, who go on the absolute attack, attack, slandering and name calling. I never said there would be the rapture on December the 7th. <clears throat> Although I believe it could and will happen at any time now. I wish it would happen on December the 7th, today, tonight, two minutes. I wish it would. Um, if you can get to, if you can point to any part of my video, I said, 
where I was where I said it was going to happen on December the seventh. Go ahead and show me, please quote me, because I knew there would be a bunch of people who paid more attention to the title of the video, to the title of the video, than to the content, uh, and then tried to list me as a date setter. It happens every time, like clockwork. Uh, it's interesting that it's to me that it's always those who oppose belief in a rapture, especially a pre-tribulation rapture, from whom I see the most venom, hatred, religious superiority, debate, and real anger come out. I've never seen it coming from, I've never seen the attitude from coming from rapture believers, always those who are opposed to the rapture. I've never seen such negativity and darkness. It's literally, there is literally a different spirit at work. They have no peace inside themselves. But it does reveal just how much seething hatred there is for their brothers and sisters. And they would deny this, and yet, by the words that they say, they go on the attack. And it is hatred. Uh, for their brothers and sisters, by those who claim to be filled with Christ's love. And if that doesn't set the stage for the separation of the sheep from the goats, then I don't know what does. The judgment of the sheep and the goats was not separating Christians from worldly people. Read the text again, carefully. They were all believers. The sheep, that is, the compassionate. Blessed are the peacemakers, Matthew 5. Um, will sit on God's right hand. So i got news coming in right now. Um, the sheep, that is, the compassionate, will sit on God's right hand and find salvation. And the goats, the hard-hearted, will sit on the left and be sent to damnation. Matthew 25, 31-46. Be why? Because judgment begins with the church, not the world. That's why the judgment between the sheep and the goats is between believers. Nothing to do with the world. It begins with the church. The world is judged afterwards. In fact, they've already been judged because they rejected Christ. Their punishment just hasn't come yet. You understand? This is the danger you're putting yourself in. First Peter 4.17 um, <clears throat> In order to make a judgment, what do the angels, what does, what does God and all of his angels look at first when they're separating the wheat from, from the chaff? What is God called repeatedly throughout Scripture? He is called the one who examines the hearts of men. You know? And we are told so many times, so many times throughout the New Testament, to, to watch ourselves, how we treat our brothers and sisters. By this, all will know if you have love for one another. Jesus' words. The love that you have for one another will show the world that I am walking among you. Okay? I would invite you to, because we're, I'm a small channel, because I cover a small corner of prophecy that is not largely discussed in the West and definitely not largely known, not known at all. Um, so I invite you to go through two particular playlists. Uh, on my on this channel here on YouTube, uh, one is the New Madrid fault line. Okay, America has been given three warnings. One hasn't come yet. That last one comes on April the eighth, twenty twenty four, and it's the last warning this nation's going to get. How soon after that uh, the destruction will come, I don't know. But those who've been on my channel for years and who know me who know the history of this channel, uh, know that I discuss those visions and dreams that other people as well as myself have had that have come true. And I discuss the Genesis timeline, literally the birth line from Genesis uh, onwards, as God parallels the lunar calendar in the beginning of days to the solar calendar in the end of days, and they make a perfect match. Okay? Abraham. Uh, he prefigures Israel in prophecy. We all know that. It's no coincidence to find that he was born 1,948 years after Adam was created. 
Abraham was born in 1948 on the lunar calendar, moon. On the solar calendar, sun, Israel is re-established as a nation born again for the first time in the end of days. And from that point on, we enter the last, we enter the last days period. And once you hit Abraham's birth, in the book of Genesis, the numbers start jumping all over the place and doing some very, very exciting things. And I just want to introduce you to this. This is just a very skeleton version, very skinnied down version. Um, that will open up a whole host of prophecy to you to show you just how close the Messiah actually is. We're at the end of the end, barring the tribulation period. Again, nobody knows the day or the hour, and they never will. The Son of Man himself, Jesus Christ himself, doesn't know. No angel knows. So how can any human being with a loud mouth come along and say, the rapture and or the second coming is going to happen on such and such a date? That would be slanderous of the Holy One and utterly foolish, in my opinion. But um, take a look at those two playlists. The Genesis Timeline playlist and the New Madrid Fault Line playlist. The Genesis Timeline playlist starts off very, very slow. I mean, the first five or six videos, kind of slow, but from the seventh one, seventh one onwards, it picks up the pace very, very fast. But you need that former information at the beginning in the first five or six videos to understand what's later being said to you. And that's what I invite you to do. We just had a massive 7.3 magnitude, 125 kilometers south of Izangel, in Vanuatu. Vanuatu. That's the kingpin. If you remember the... Uh, I'm going to post a link to the first video at the top of that list in that playlist. Please watch that video if you watch nothing else. This, this earthquake in Vanuatu happening at this particular time is super, 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 super significant. And at 7.3, um, it's just, in, that's mind blowing. It's shocking and I'm wondering if it fulfills the prophecy that Timothy Snodgrass spoke of in that video. And it's quoted in that video. I'm gonna put it as a link underneath this video here on YouTube. This just made my hair stand on end when I realized that this happened in Vanuatu. One more thing, please pray for Pastor J.D. Farag's wife. Um, she has been diagnosed, I believe, with a very, um, with an aggressive breast cancer. And, uh, uh, I mean, the guy's, he's a great guy. I used to listen to him a lot more than I do now, but, um, you know, she's a sister in Christ, you know, <clears throat> this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, you know, where is your compassion? We let denominational differences split and divide us against each other, and we forget our compassion. Where is Jesus' heart in the way you speak and treat other people who you disagree with? I mean, where is your heart? Where is your compassion? Christ comes for those who are his own, who are like him, you know? Um, but people, fighting is easier to do. Don't forget the wolves that are circling the sheep pen of the body of Christ. They don't care what denomination you are. They want to see the whole sheep pen destroyed and all the sheep killed, you know? so. How much pleasure is it is it for them to see that the sheep are attacking each other? You're doing the Satan's work for him. It's just much less work for them to do because the less unity and cohesiveness there is in the body of Christ, the less they will be able to stand against that which comes. Think about that. All right, model yourself after Christ. Read Matthew chapter five. You know the Beatitudes, the beautiful attitudes. Um, Please pray for Pastor J.D. Farag's wife that she may get through this aggressive breast cancer, that the Lord may take it away. God bless you, and keep on looking up. We don't know the day or the hour, but we know, we know that he is near.
God bless.